Uh, hello, I was initially supposed to speak for uh, only 20 minutes, but I eventually got 10 more minutes, so that's awesome because I'm not going to have to uh, go very fast and we will be able to have a discussion after that. Uh, hi, I'm Bartosz Golaszewski. I've been working in the field for 15 years now. I maintain a couple things in the kernel, uh, most importantly the GPIO subsystem, and I contribute to uh, many different projects uh, like playing with software. I'm with Linaro. We are uh, making, so my team, the Qualcomm landing team, is making Linux run great on Qualcomm chips, so make sure to check us out. And I am going to be talking about an issue that, so if I had a euro or a dollar for every time someone comes to me and uh, writes me an email and ask, asks me, like, what is the issue with, uh, the, with the GPIO character device? Why do I have to keep the process running for as long as I want to control the GPIO pin? Why can't I do something like I used to do with SysFS where I could just write to a file and uh, forget about it, the value would be retained? Then I wouldn't necessarily be rich yet, but I would probably be able already to take my family out for dinner, which is uh, reason enough to investigate what, uh, what the issue is and what can be done about it. So the thing about the character device is that, well, you have a process, you open the character device uh, f special file, you keep your, dis you, keep, you, keep your you, you get your file descriptor, you keep it, uh, you hold on to it for as long as you want to control the GPIO device and then you close it when you're done. But that forces you to have a single process, open the device, do the requesting and stay alive for as long as you're controlling the GPIOs, which is not the case with SysFS where uh, you could just export a file with one process doing a write to a attribute file, uh, change the value in another, and then unexport the line um, in, in the third. To give you a practical example, this is what you would typically do with libgpio-d. With GPIO set, the, the, the GPIO command, uh, command, GPI command line tool for setting GPIO lines, you would set a line to some value, then it would stay alive, then you would kill the process, and then the state of that line is no longer guaranteed to be anything because either the kernel or a, another user space process can uh, request it. With SysFS, this wasn't the case. So what you would do, you would export a line and then you would be sure for this, it would stay exported for as long as not another user process doesn't come around and, and just uh, unexport it or change its value. So the kernel would not be able to request it. So what happens is that the SysFS GPIO interface can be imagined as an, a daemon running in the kernel that takes commands from user space and does things to GPIOs. It's convenient enough that people are reluctant to change to, to switch to libgpiod, and uh, I definitely want to cater to the audience. So, if I want to recreate this behavior in user space using libgpiod, then I need some centralized authority in user space that would take over from SysFS, you know, being this, 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 this uh, authority controlling all the GPIO lines. Well, this is one uh, thing. And another thing is that can we make the GPIO state persistent in the kernel so that we can open the GPIO de character device, ex ex change the state of the line and then close it and it would be retained. There is a whole Pandora box of issues with that, and uh, I, I definitely don't have the time to discuss it, but in general, this has been shut down. Uh, we've discussed it with device tree maintainers, and uh, unfortunately, it's a no-go, so user space it is. So uh, we're going to have a new thing in libgpiod. It's going to be called the GPIO Manager, and I've been working on it for the past two years, and I can finally say that, uh, well, I'm, I'm glad to announce that it's been merged, it's in the master branch of the libgpiod tree. And what are we uh, adding? So, there's going to be a daemon that's going to be running in user space, it's going to be based on G object bindings to libgpiod. We're going to have um, a GPIO, cli GPIO client command line utility that you will be able to use from script to control GPIOs and uh, a bit of distro, uh, some, some files for, for, for to make, uh, make it easier to integrate the thing with uh, distro. So there's going to be a systemd service with some sandboxing UDEF rules so that we don't have to 
um, access the devices, the, 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 the GPIO SAS route anymore, or rather it's, it's, there's going to be a standardized way of doing that. And an example configuration for DBus. So some of you may ask yourself when you're seeing uh, the, the word DBus, like why, why are we going with, uh, with this protocol? And I've considered various options. And first of all, the main thing for me was the time. I just don't have enough time to develop my own protocol and DBus is already there. It's you know, time proven, it works, it's uh, available on most distros and uh, some people may use some very minimal build root images, but from what I can tell from talking to users, uh, the majority of people are running proper distros that run systemd, that run DBus and uh, it, it's already there, so let's use it. Uh, DBus is uh, standardized, so you have a very uh, a, 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 a nice set of API uh, definitions interfaces to use. Uh, you, you, you basically just have to plug into it. Uh, there is a wide selection of tooling uh, which makes writing code for, uh, for, for, for this, type, this type of DBus daemon uh, much easier and faster. Uh, lots of libraries implement DBus, so you can access the new GPIO API from uh, all kinds of tools, command line tools, libraries, uh, literally every programming language will allow you to, to do what you need. And uh, while DBus is obviously much slower than what you would get when accessing the GPIO character device directly, it's, uh, if you really need high frequency, then you would probably be better off uh, not using any kind of intermediate process be it DBus or, or some other kind of uh, daemon where, where you, will, you will have to deal with context switches. Uh, will there ever be like a smaller custom protocol for GPIOs? Uh, I'm not saying no, it depends on, on, on the time. Uh, once I'm done with this, maybe I will start chipping away at, at the new thing, but uh, it's obviously gonna take much more time because you know, if, if we go the protocol buffer way or, or some other custom way, it's gonna be much slower than what we get using the existing Dbus libraries. So uh, how does it work in practice? Quick uh, Dbus glossary. Uh, what we, the, 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 the things that we deal with when using Dbus in, in user space is gonna be bus names, objects, and interfaces first. So the bus name in this, in this, this case, it's gonna be io.gpio.d1. Uh, this will appear on the system bus, so the, the global bus, as, as opposed to the, to the session bus, which is per user. Um, we're gonna have objects. Uh, the bus objects are uh, defined by, the, by, by their object path, and we're gonna deal with chips, lines, and requests, primarily and interfaces. So each object can implement one or more interfaces and this basically means that an interface describes the behavior of an object and uh, we're gonna have interfaces such as chip line request and then as you can imagine chip objects will implement the chip interface, uh, re request objects will implement the request interface and so on. Uh, and an interface can define properties, methods and signals. So in our case it's uh, gonna be like the offset of, the, of, the, of a specific line, the label of the chip, that's gonna be our, these are gonna be our properties. Then you will be able to call methods, which are basically functions implemented by a given object. Uh, so you can request lines, set values. And finally, you will be able to listen for debug signals. Um, these are signals, custom signals like the edge event. So interrupts from GPIOs or uh, more standardized DBus signals like changes in properties. I'm gonna talk about it in a second. So let's like, how, how does it look? So Im 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 imagine that you have the D GPIO DBus uh, daemon running in the background and let's use the QDBus command line tool, which is uh, probably the nicest tool to, to talk to DBus uh, APIs um, currently available. It's part of the Qt uh, package available on most distros. So if you list your objects on this system uh, bus name, the GPIO D1 bus name, you will see all the objects, all the chips, all the active requests and lines as well exported by each chip. Uh, then you can, for instance, read the label. So you call 
you, you take the object and you, you take the name of the property, you will, you, you will be able to uh, display the, name, the label of the chip. Same for the name of the line. And uh, you can call methods, like in this case, we, we, we are calling the request released method. Uh, this will free the release that we have uh, previously created. So this is uh, command line, but uh, I'm sorry, th these are the standardized tools, but uh, this is quite awkward to use. So what we are providing in the package is the GPIO CLI or GPIO CLI uh, command line tool. And uh, so this, it does the same thing. It talks to DBAS over the well-defined protocol, except that it uh, exposes an, a more straightforward way of doing, uh, of calling these functions. So what can you do? Um, let's say you, you're wait, your script is waiting for the GPIO manager to come up. You do GPIO CLI wait. Uh, you can wait for a specific chip to up, GPIO chip to appear in the system. Uh, you just have to specify the dash dash chip option. You can specify an, a timeout and just you know wait for a pro, for, for your manager to come up. If it doesn't, then you exit with an error. Uh, some of the commands may be uh, similar to what you may already know from the existing GPIO tools. You can detect a set of lines, list them. Uh, I'm sorry, a set of chip. You can detect the chips in the system, list them with, with uh, the, their properties. You can uh, detect a specific chip by specifying its name. Uh, you can display information about a line just like what the GPIO info tool would do. So you do GPIO CLI info foo, you see all the properties of the line. And uh, now for the fun part. So no longer do you need to run your GPIO set process and, and keep it running. What you do now, you run GPIO CLI request, you specify your options. Um, the options are hopefully pretty well documented in the help text. Uh, you Request, you, you, you press enter, the request happens on the daemon site, and then it prints you the name of your new request. So now you can list the request, you do GPIO CLI request, you see your active request, uh, the name of the chip that it requested lines from, and the offsets of the lines on that chip. And so now what you do, you do GPIO CLI set, foo, set your value, and the process exits, the line is set. Great success. So uh, you display the value of the line, GPIO CLI GET, bam, it's there. So it looks like a small improvement, but it's actually uh, something that's been requested for a long time. So now you can uh, profit from all the other functionalities of the kernel, of the user space uh, AP, ABI for GPIO. So you can reconfigure lines that are already requ requested without releasing them to, to the kernel. You can use the GPIO CLI monitor tool to watch uh, for edge events and uh, well, interrupt. And then finally, let's say you're done with your request. You do release request zero and it's gone. You can uh, also map the name of the line to its chip and offset. And finally, you can wait for proper, you can, you can watch property changes of lines. So this is the notify command where you will First, when you run it, you will see the current information about the line, and then when it changes, for instance, in this case, it gets requested, you see all the changes in properties in, uh, as, as they happen. So, this is ready. It's uh, merged in the, in the tree. You can check it out. Uh, I will release it as part of uh, 2.2. It's, uh, it will come up with a systemd service file and it has um, a number of sandboxing rules so that uh, we, well, the, the, the goal is to make the daemon run as a, a non-privileged user. So it's gonna be running as, as the GPIO manager user. It's gonna be uh, using a dbus config that will allow well, root to do anything then uh, any user will be able to inspect GPIOs and their properties, but only the members of the GPIO group will be able to request and manipulate GPIO lines. And uh, this will... So right now when you're using libgpio-d, there, there's nothing that uh, enforces any kind of policy. So by default, it's just root that can do everything. Uh, nobody else can do... Uh, 
anything with GPIOs and it's up to the user to configure, your, configure the system to if, if, if they want to have any, any other rules for that. So this will be more standardized. And uh, finally, uh, I am about to tag uh, the RC1 for 2.2, but I decided to wait for the presentation and just you know, announce it and uh, give people some time to try it out as it is in, 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 the, in its current master branch. Any you know, reviewing, testing are uh, much appreciated. And uh, so, yeah, that's it. Uh, we have lots of time for questions. Yes, please. Yeah, so currently there are access, uh, there is access control on the uh, test GPIO chip instance if you use a standard Linux. Uh, yes. Permission. So would you, wouldn't it be good to have a way to at least retain that so you can assign one GPIO chip to a specific user or uh, to a virtual machine, which is what uh, initially the GPIO aggregator was uh, written for? Well. Unfortunately, I'm... Can you repeat the question or summarize the question? Yes, the question is like, can we uh, do what we can currently do with Unix file system permissions? Can we assign a single GPIO chip to a given user? Unfortunately, that is not possible with uh, Dbus. So what you can do with Dbus is you can define which methods or properties can be read, accessed by a given user, uh, but it will be the same for all objects of a given, ty of a given type. Of a given class interface, well, yeah, interf we, we deal with interfaces, so it's going to be the same for for uh, for a given interface. But you could assign some GPIO chip instances to the Dbus part and other not. Of, so, can can we assign part of uh, like some GPIO in chips to to the daemon and, and and some not? Uh, of course, uh, yeah. Well, it's not implemented right now, so you would see some errors in the daemon. It will complain that it cannot access a given GPIO chip, but it, will, it would work. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good feature request, I guess, uh, to, to just uh, maybe allow some configuration for the daemon to only deal with this particular chips, this particular chip and not, not, not the other, or, or ignore this one. It's a good point. You were first, I'm sorry. Uh, Um, well, you, you mean? Rob Herring, is he here? <laughs> <laughs> there, there. We, uh, maybe I should have put the link to the discussion because there was a lengthy discussion. I, 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 will, I will update the slides uh, and, and, and put the link to the discussion on the mailing list. There were several issues with this, and uh, yeah, eventually it was it was it was shut down. So first of the, the, the main issue is that that would be you know describing behavior in device tree, which is uh, not allowed. Uh, you, you had a question before. In the existing SysFS interface, we also have the possibility to define Unix permissions per GPIO. So is that anything that could be done uh, with the new API? Per GPIO, no. No, but uh, this hasn't been possible with uh, with the card def from the start. You could use the GPIO aggregator to expose a single GPIO line and specify the permissions for that line. Yes, but, but with not. The it's what? With the interface, it's just a CHO. Yes, that's 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 the, that's the main uh, complaint of many people that. Uh, it's, you know, th there are many reasons why it's worse than the character device, but uh, I understand that for many people it's just so easy to use that it's, it's difficult to switch. I hope this will make it a bit easier to, to, to switch. <laughs> uh, yeah, question here. So can you repeat the question? Because I The question is, uh, do, do, do some drivers uh, keep the persistence of GPIO state uh, in the kernel and uh, is, is there a compatibility with the new, um, with the, with the new API? 
Uh, some drivers do, uh, many do, some don't, uh, it's, but it's, you know, it's not defined, it's, it's driver dependent. And when you say, do they keep the state? Well, it just means that they don't revert to some predefined value, but they will not guarantee the state because anyone can come and, and get the line and uh, change the state. Uh, it will not, uh, so because this behavior is undefined, there was never any contract. Uh, so it's, uh, you cannot say that, oh, this driver used to keep the, per the state persistence and now with the daemon it doesn't. There was never any contract for that. It's undefined behavior, so you, you are officially not allowed to rely on it. Yes? What about Android? With Android? I don't know. The question is, what goes on with Android? I, I don't work with Android at all, so I, I have no idea. Yeah, they don't have keypads. Uh, how is that a pretty big chunk of uh, embedding model? Is Android using libgpiod? It's GPL. I don't think they're using it. No, they're not. Uh, so, but what's going to happen to the character device? They, they are using the character device. Maybe it's a system device. It's part of the hub. I don't work with Android. So the question is, how would I use it with Android? I, I, I simply don't work with Android, so that hasn't crossed my mind. That, 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 that's the answer. <laughs> but I'm, I'm open to ideas. So. Well, the thing is that the CCFS interface would work and the character device would work. Yes. Now you would need an Android specific or maybe a port of uh, the demo. So, so, you're saying, Pantelis is saying that um, Android would need something else. Uh, I have not been approached by a single person uh, using Android so far. Uh, and literally everyone who approaches me uses Linux. So Linux user space. So I, I, I don't know and I, because I don't work with Android at all, I simply, uh, it, it didn't occur to me. Other question? Yeah, there's a question over there. Um, are there any plans to make this consistent over reboot so that you can say, like, uh, yeah, put some config files and you want to have after reboot some GPIOs in a specific state? So the question is, is there, are there any plans to m make the GPIO state persistent over a reboot? I haven't thought about it, but it uh, sounds like a good feature request. You can do it, actually, because uh, you can have, you know, a script run from a system. Sure, but, uh, do you have to do it by yourself, or is it maybe a good feature? It's, it's a good feature request. You can, <laughs> you can add it uh, to, 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 uh, to the GitHub uh, page as a feature request, because it, it sounds like, a, like, a, like an interesting feature, yeah. Uh, no, it's not possible yet unless you do it yourself, but uh, sounds like a, like a thing that we could add down the line. Okay, cool. So, uh, are there any more questions? Yeah, so thank you very much.